Welcome back, mashed potatoes, to the first video of 2022, and it's almost March. I really need to try harder. One of the things I love about working on my orc army is the opportunity to kit bash some trash into fun tabletop additions, and there's a lot more opportunities to do that these days now that the world is pretty much garbage. Just kidding, I know you come here to escape, but there is no escape from the oncoming systemic collapse. But miniature war games can be a fun distraction, so saddle up and grab your glue guns, partners. Let's make us an orc war buggy. Before we get started, you can support this channel by donating to my GoFundMe campaign or buying something from my eBay store. I've got comic books, board games, and even curated lots of pre-painted miniatures. The prices are quite reasonable and it stops me from having to rob banks to pay for my medications. All the links for both are in the description below. Now the idea for this build really began with this 1 38th scale Volkswagen frame. Don't quote me on that scale, I don't know what toy this originally came from, but I got this chassis by itself at the Scrap Exchange, a local thrift store that specializes in art supplies. I made a video about the place some years ago, but I suspect this came off of a pullback diecast car, the type you can find at Walgreens. I try to walk five days a week, weather and health permitting of course, and on those walks I often come across bits of scrap metal and plastic. That's where I found this piece I'm now shaping with some pliers in order to fit it onto the back of the vehicle. This will break up the recognizable buggy profile and start giving it that ramshackle orky look. I'll start by breaking off these little tabs and then bending it into the shape I want. Once I get a good fit, I'll be fixing these two bits together with some two-part epoxy. Going forward, I'll be using a lot of this stuff since this build features more heavy metal than a school shooter's bedroom. This one simple addition has already given this project a bit of a Mad Max look that if at any point it fails to come together or I decide to scrap it, I can always just glue it to some foam and make it into a wrecked vehicle to work as war game terrain. Or if it's Mother's Day, you know, glue a handle on it and make a purse. I've got to build an undercarriage to hold the guts of the vehicle and to attach the axles to, so I'm passing a couple of skewers through the headlight and parking light holes. Two-part epoxy putty seals the deal. I'll leave that to dry overnight and then cut the excess skewers off with my wire cutters. At this point, I'm not sure if I want those skewer points on the vehicle or not, so I leave them for now. The floor of our buggy will be made from a sheet of plastic from a jug of kitty litter. I just have to trace out the side I need with a sharpie, and then cut it out with a safety knife. And once we've got it cut out, we'll be gluing it into place with, well, you know the drill. I've got another piece of scrap metal here that I found on the side of the highway. The last little leg of my walk takes me on the highway and I find a bunch of neat stuff that just comes off of cars and trucks. There are four pieces of scrap that end up in this project that I just found while walking this week. So kids, if you're paying attention, grab a safety knife and play in the highway. This piece was very rusty so I let it soak in white vinegar overnight and then I took my Dremel tool wire brush attachment to it and it's amazing how well it cleaned up. I am wearing safety goggles for this as rust in the eye seems like a bad time. You'll always want to have some kind of protective barrier between yourself and any kind of rust in your face unless you're into that sort of thing. Once again, two part epoxy and we'll just place this bit of metal in here like so. This next bit is all about breaking up this dollar store Hummer and making use of the parts. There are a couple of screws on the bottom that come out easily enough. I'll be using these heavy wire cutters to free the axles from this frame, and I'll be using the tires from this dollar to store a toy. They aren't the best, but they are the best I have on hand. I'll also be stealing the doors off the Hummer also, and they're surprisingly good fit on our bug. If you put a Hummer and a VW Beetle together, I guess you get a Humbug. Sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. Now we're going to use the Hummer's bumper to build up the frame and interior of our buggy. That looks pretty good. I have an old second edition Space Orc truck driver here and I built his little cockpit out of parts of a Zoids model. So yes, there's even some official GW stuff going into this build. Next I'm going to tackle the doors and cut this old Circle K gift card up to give the buggy a little personality. 
I've decided against the skewer spikes coming out of the back after all. They look stupid, and honestly, I don't want somebody to grab this model and hurt themselves. I'm chopping up some plastic corrugated pipe for the exhaust ports on the back of the buggy. Once they're the right length, we'll adjust attach them using, well, you know. I want the iconic orc teeth on the front of the vehicle, and instead of trying to recreate that aesthetic myself, I'm just going to put an image of the teeth from an actual Games Workshop vehicle on my phone, get it to scale, and then trace onto that with some transparent plastic using a Sharpie. I'm going to cut it out with my heavy wire cutters and then just glue them onto the front of my buggy one tooth at a time. I found a couple of these plastic rings on my walk and they just happen to be perfect to act as an armored covering for the buggy's tires. And so they shall be. I just need to trim them up and cut them in half. I'll be making some more armor plates for these tires out of the same Circle K gift card my mom gave me. And for this light plastic assembly, I switched over to the small hot glue gun as I want this to set up fast. The downside of the hot glue is, of course, having to trim all of the little hot glue hairs that form up on everything, but it's a small price to pay for quick assembly. I'm building out the frame of our buggy with a couple of support struts made from Zoid model sprues, nibbly nobly bits. Nibbly nobly bits. I want to fill up the back of the buggy, so I use a bit more of that Circle K card to cover up much of the open back. And this plastic pipe came from a pet water fountain. I mean, a water fountain for pets. I'd have a pet water fountain. Uh, I've cut it down to be a smokestack coming out of our buggy. And a bit of plastic cut from the Hummer will make a nice roll bar for our buggy also. Let's throw a burner gas can on here to add a little more genuine Games Workshop goodness. And for weapons, a couple of heavy shooters mounted onto the rearview mirrors of the Hummer. For rivets, I'm using a mix of chopped Chupa Pop stick and tiny jewel beads. Then it's outside for some gray primer. Probably a little too much gray primer, not that there's a ton of detail to lose, but Full disclosure, I primed this at night and I really couldn't see what I was doing. Well, let's start painting it up. I start by blacking out anything that's going to be dry brush metallic, then I begin dry brushing that metal over everything with a makeup brush. Then it's time for a base coat of red on our war buggy. I'm slowing up building up layers and highlights as well as dropping in some shadows. Let's break up the red with some yellow checkerboard. So how did it turn out, my mashed potatoes? All right, let's look at some pictures of this project as it went through the different stages of painting, going from assembly to priming to base coats. Eventually, I will put this on a 60 millimeter oval base, such as they have in the Warhammer. I don't have any on hand right now because I haven't played any modern edition of Warhammer that uses those bases, and I'm certainly not going to pay the Warhammer price. I know there are some third parties selling those. We'll grab some at some point, simply because I don't want people to handle this model any more than they have to. It is kind of a scratch-built guy, although it is very sturdy. Again, thank you, two-part epoxy. Uh, I don't want people to, you know, get any of the nibbly-nobbly bits, bust it off with their fingers, or, you know, drop it or whatever. I feel that, that a base is uh, just kind of nice. Plus, if I do want to sell this or use it in modern warhammer uh, a base will make it that much better for those purposes let's get a couple of decent images off of my phone here i've got a few uh, relatively high def pictures i've snapped of the finished product guys if you'd like to support this channel please leave a comment below if you're watching this within 24 hours of me posting it honestly leave a comment anytime but within the first 24 hours it really makes a difference for the algorithm and will get this video seen more and we're really trying to increase the productivity of this channel uh, in every way possible. And that's really going to help. So please, guys, if you can do that, even just two letters, hi, Dave, or anything, uh, it'd be a 
big uh, help, big kick in the butt for this channel. So thank you for that. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you'd like to check out our Facebook page where you can see pictures of this model or pictures of projects from the past or just say hi to the community or what have you, uh, put the link for the Facebook page in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.